Theoretical and experimental probability. How are experimental probability and theoretical probability alike? All right, that's your central question. Let's talk about theoretical probability. It's based on uniform probability. Uniform probability. It means basically means this. Hey, what should happen when conducting the experiment? Okay, theoretically, you might have heard this. Theoretically, this should happen. Well, okay, we'll find out. Okay, and then experimental probability based on the relative frequency. It means, hey, what actually happened when I tried out the experiment? You don't have to draw this one out, but uh, here's an example. He thinks that uh, this is, in theory, it should happen, and it is actually happening. So let's talk about an, ex an example. A spinner split into three equal sections, a blue, a red, and a green section. If spun 60 times, how many times should it land on each color? So in theory, since this is, you have a one-third a chance to split into each one, that should mean if I spin it 60 times, a third of that should be red, a third in blue, and a third in green. That means 20 out of 60, 20 out of 60, and 20 out of 60 should be what we actually get when we spin that, in theory, okay? This is a theoretical because you're saying, hey, this is, you know, the numbers match. It's a third. It should be equal chances each time. That's in theory. So let's say now that I actually conducted that experiment, and these were the results, the actual results that I got. This is the number of times, and these are the three colors, okay? If you notice, if I take 21, 15, and 24 and add it together, I get 60, okay? So I did spin it 60 times, but this is the actual results. So find the experimental probability of each, okay? So let's talk about the green one. The probability of the green was 21 out of 60, which was about, which was 35%. The experimental probability, or I'm sorry, the theoretical probability told me it should have been a third or 33%. So this is a little bit more, right? Over by one, actually, right? We were looking for 20. Probability of blue. Okay, so the blue was 15 out of 20. 15 out of 20 reduces to 25%. And I was looking for 33%. So that was off by a little bit. And then the probability of red. Okay, probability of red was 24 out of 60, which is 40%, and that was a lot more than what I was looking for. So this is in theory, right? It's supposed to be, but in, in reality, other factors come involved here, right? It depends on, you know, how, how hard did I spin it and all these other, other things that, uh, you know, the friction between the board and the spinner. A lot of things come into to play here, but this is practically this is what actually happened and this is what in theory it should happen but you'll notice that the numbers are pretty close okay now why is this important well we want to predict future events based on experimental probability you can use theoretical probability to make a prediction about future events that's why it's important to know these things here so last year a dvd store sold this many action movies 670 580 comedy 450 drama and 300 horror movies Okay, that's what they did last year. And so this is actually very practical. If you own a business or you work for a company that uh, sells things, you can look at what did they do last year, and that's going to predict, that can help you predict what you're going to do for the future years. Okay, so here we go. The media buyer, so someone who actually goes and buys all the movies that they're actually going to sell, expects to sell 5,000 DVDs next year. So... We want to sell 5,000. Based on the results, how many comedy DVDs should she buy and explain? Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to take a look at what did I sell this particular year, last year. Last year looks like if I add all this up together, I get 2,000 total movies. Okay, so we sold 2,000 movies. Of those 2,000, okay, 580 of them were comedies. So I can say, look, last year I did 580 out of 2,000, which reduces to 29 over 100, which is 29%. So 29% of all the movies that were sold were comedy movies. So based on that, therefore, I can use that information and say, okay, that's what we did this year, 29%. If, they, if the buyer expects to sell 5,000, which is a lot more than we sold last time, uh, if we expect to sell 5,000, how many of those are going to be uh, comedy? Can we expect to be comedy? So this is experimental probability, right? This is what we actually sold. And what we're going to find out right now is theoretical. In theory, if this stays, stays the same, what we can do is we can do some cross-multiplying and find out that the answer to this would be 1,450. If 
if we expect to buy uh, sell five thousand, then fourteen fifty of those would be uh, comedy movies, and that's how many they should buy. We could also think, hey, twenty nine percent of five thousand is that same amount. So I just did it two different ways for you. But notice again what I did. I figured out how many I sold out of the year, right? So five eighty out of two thousand. That was my experimental probability, and then I used that probability to kind of estimate what in theory should be for 5000 so in theory it should be 1450 okay so that tells you this buyer when they go buy all the comedy movies they're going to buy this many uh so that or more maybe right but right around here so that uh, they can accommodate what they what they think they're going to sell all right that's it for today's notes